It's day five of the 30-day Apple iPhone 5 challenge. How's it going, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and the iOS challenge continues. This time around, finding a few things that I either missed about the operating system or some things that I find really useful in day-to-day -day use. We talked about some of the negatives in day three. Let's talk about some of the positives in day five. One thing I had forgotten how much I liked on the iPhone 5, and actually to a greater extent on iOS 6, is the ability to resize photos within email out of the box. I don't have to download any applications. And to give you a backstory, I'm constantly emailing photos, whether it's photos of products I need to email to myself to get those up on the site. Whatever the case may be, I'm constantly emailing photos. So just using a cat picture, for example, that I took last night, I can come in here and I can go to mail, and it brings up my phone dog email address, then I can go to two and I can type in whatever, but then when I go to send, and I'll type in an email address, I need to come back here so I can actually see it. There we go. So then send it to myself and I'll send cat. And as soon as I hit send, you'll notice that it automatically allows me to resize the picture. So you know what, I don't want to send a one megabyte picture, it takes too long, and it works fine when I'm over LTE, but when I'm over HSPA Plus, or I'm on a busy show floor like CES, and wireless connectivity is terrible, I want to make it smaller so it'll send as fast as possible, and I can't underscore how important this is to me. I can go to Medium, for example, and it becomes a 271 kilobyte email as opposed to a one gigabyte uh, email slash image. That's really nice, especially when you're in, and again, not as much of an issue when you're in LTE areas, but a huge issue when you're in HSPA plus areas, 3G areas, edge areas, 1X areas, whatever the case may be on your respective wireless carrier that you use the iPhone 5 or any phone for that matter on. So really impressed with that. Also impressed with some of the improvements to the music application. So I'll load this up and I'll show you my running playlist, for example. Don't ask, don't ask. Uh, but you can see, of course, different colors here as well. Playlists, artists, songs, albums, and more. But just kind of a new color scheme. And I've got a new song like this, for example. I like it like that. And then I've got different kind of revised look and feel. You can see the icons are different down here at the bottom. Kind of a slightly revised feel to it. So it gives it kind of a fresher look. So again, very, very, very much evolutionary all around on this device. And it's very clear that iOS 6 is an evolutionary bump from uh, earlier versions of iOS. Another thing that kind of irritates the heck out of me, two things. The notifications area, pretty much useless. And also take a look, for example, at Mail. Take a look at App Store. Take a look at Starbucks. Take a look at Google Plus, Foursquare. It all just seems kind of cluttered to me. I've got 69 here and one here and one here and one here. I can't really go to notifications area and just clear it all out. Even when I clear out of Google Plus right here, for example, it still shows that I've got 69 Google Plus messages. I'd love for it to sync up much better with the notifications area, so when I clear it out of the notifications bar, it's like, okay, he's probably seen this, he probably knows, and doesn't want to see a notification for it anymore. This just becomes very cluttered as you get a message from AT&T, you get a message from America, and you get a message from, uh, from messages themselves, you get text messages, whatever the case may be, missed calls, it becomes very cluttered, and it just seems like it's a very unorganized approach. So a big fan of the feature of the shortcuts you get when somebody calls you. For example, I'm calling from my office phone right now. You can see, of course, slide to answer, typical iOS look here. But decline and answer are options, as well as reply with message or remind me later. When I hit reply with message, it's got can't talk right now. I can do a custom one as well. And then I can easily access that. So if I'm in a meeting, I'm on the road, can't talk, I can easily pop it up, hit that and without looking or without not looking at the road or without looking at the phone, I should say. Also a big fan of the camera. These are a couple of things I'd forgotten about in my time uh, of using Android. Not to say that there aren't great Android options out there, but still a big fan of this. I love how I can easily shift back and forth between the gallery and a live image, something that was actually pioneered by Windows Phone, but it brings over some great options here. Of course, Panorama, which has been available for some time on various platforms. The Panorama here, Grid, HDR, but the overall quality of pictures is fantastic on the iPhone. I posted one last night on Twitter. Check it out, phone dog underscore Aaron. But the camera is definitely an awesome feature. So I talked about a lot of negatives in day three. Still kind of bored with the operating system. I miss widgets a lot after working with Android and the live tiles after working a little bit with Windows Phone 8. That said, trying to find the positives in iOS and iOS 6 to a greater extent. So day five, looking pretty optimistic. Will I be able to hold it for 30 days? We'll have to find out. I am getting a little bit bored, still pretty bored, with the grid of icons and the fact that there are no widgets. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage of the iPhone 5 30-day challenge. Let me know what you'd like to see at phone dog underscore Aaron on Twitter, Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Have a great weekend. See you next week with another update from the iPhone 5 camp.